All right, this one's gonna be on Ubiquity. It is a home server for your comics and eBooks, and it supports um, what is that? EPUBs, CBZ files, CBR files, and PDFs. All right, and it's just a Java program. It's not open source, so if you want this freedom person, then I uh, just save you some time there. Okay. Anyways, let me show you how it looks like when uh, you have it all set up. So this is what it looks like with the web UI. Just log into your uh, server IP, and the port number is uh, 2202. That's the default port, and you just click on you know your library here. So I have a couple here on my other porn, but let me go to comics here. Zoom in on this, and if you want to read it, so let's say for example this one, my X Men. If you want to read this, click on it, and you click on it again. Now they do have the title. You know, and you know, if you fill out the, the author, then it will not say unknown, but I didn't fill out the author. Anyways, this one is 22, uh, 21 pages, and the size here, and the format is CBR files, aka WinRAR files. So if I was r trying to, you know, read this on my Android, they'll give me these options. Um, you know, what is that? No, not Android. Me. Yeah, Android or any other mobile phone or tablets or laptops or other computer. Actually, you can actually read this over the internet too if you want. So if you're on a you know different state, you can still log into your server and, and read this. Anyways, back to the point. Uh, you can actually download it, which I always hate doing because when I'm on my phone, I don't want to waste time downloading the stupid thing. Okay, I just want to read it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read the ding thing here, and I'll load it. Uh, right now, it's not scaling well because we're on a, our desktop. But if you're on your phone or something like that, it'll scale it really well to fit your screen. So this is what it looks like, right? And if you want to go back and forth, you go, uh, what was it, the right side? Click on the right side. It'll go to the next page, so on and so forth, right? If you want to go back, just hit the left page, and, you know, you're back. If you click in the middle, let me zoom in here. Click in the middle, then this thing will pop up and allow you to jump to different pages. So I want to jump to page 15. I just type in 15, hit go, right? And then click on here again to make that go away. Uh, click it again. And then you want to close the book. It says close the book. And then you're back to this thing here. Pretty simple. Uh, click this and go up. And then choose another one if you want. What else are you going to do here? What does this one do? This one is basically, uh, you know, have different settings for how you, uh, you display it. But we're not going to do any of that. They do have this other one here. This is for random books. I don't want to click it right now because it will go to my other porn books, which I don't want to show. But I uh, click on this uh, search option here. You can search for, you know, let's say for Silver Surfer or any other books you have on here. And there you go. We find Silver Surfer. And you click on one of these. Let's say the first one here. And then you can start reading. So on and so forth. You get the idea. That's pretty much it, you know, and this is how it looked like um, on your, uh, you know, other devices that you have in your house, your phone, your tablet, laptop, other desktop if you have that. Uh, so that's how you can read comics uh, without downloading it, just streaming it. Um, they do have, what is it, EPUBs and PDF, like I said. I haven't tried the, the EPUB one, but I did try the PDF one. That thing is janky, so I wouldn't recommend anyone to use PDFs at the moment. Uh, maybe in the future it will be better, but right now it sucks. It always fails on me. So that's it. Just mainly for comics in my opinion. Uh, that's what I will recommend it for. All right. Uh, anything else? That's pretty much it for the program, really. It's not that hard to use. Now, the problem is setting it up because, you know, it's not in your repositories. So you have to do this manually. So I'll show you how to do this here. Um, go to the download page here, downloads, and this one, you know, since it's a Java program, it does work on Windows and Mac and any other uh, computer that has Java, you can run this on. Anyways, um, download Java in your repositories, so you need Java 6 or, or higher, so I'll give you an example here. If you're using, you know, apt, you do apt get what is that search or whatever for Java or you on yum you know yum search uh, JRE7 so when you search for JRE7 right 
and this one should have it might look different on you know whatever uh, Linux distribution you're using but it should say JRE7 uh, open JDK or something like that and the one that I use is the headless one because I don't want to use the GUI uh, they do have a GUI to set this up but um, I'll show you how to do it with the web UI it's much easier um, so we just gonna install this headless one here right install that sucker that's the uh, dependencies for this program install that and then you need to download the JRE um, program that they have uh, for ubiquity so download this one it's just a zip file extracted uh, once you extract it, it's a jar file okay and make sure you know where to uh, put it at I usually put mine in um, what was it what is this PD uh, no, I just PW. Oh, damn it, I write it wrong. I usually put in mine in uh, my binary and then ubiquity folder. I just create this one myself. Not really that hard. But in here, they should have, um, you know, once you extract it, they should have this ubiquity jar file here. And just put that in there. And this is how I do the aliases here for this one here. So, real simple. Right, just this whole part here. You don't have to concentrate on the other part, just these parts here. So the first part is your path, where you saved it to. So I saved it to my binary ubiquity folder, okay? So create that um, wherever you wanna put it. And the next one is just the ubiquity program. This is how we're gonna launch it. And this one is for the GUI, if you use the GUI. But since we're not gonna use it, we don't care about this line really. Uh, if you ever want to quit, this is how you would quit. And you want to check the status, this is how you would check the status here. Right, it's real simple. Anyways, let me uh, quit out of this. And let me quit the program. We'll do quit. Right. We quit out of that. So you can see that I already quit, so you can reload this. It doesn't work no more, right? But uh, if I do, what is that? Let's quit. Ubiquity status. Right, Ubiquity has stopped it. It's not running right now. If I want to start it, I just type in Ubiquity. And now it starts it in the background. If I do status again, it'll say, okay, Ubiquity is running uh, on uh, localhost port 2202. If you want to change the settings, you use the admin. Since this is your first time that you're using this program, you want to use this uh, admin thing here. Uh, and then you just paste this in here. Okay. So let's go to admin here. Um, the first time you go to that URL here, they'll tell you to create a uh, administration password. Just go ahead and create a password. And that's what you're gonna use later on to go back in here, right? But this is what it looks like after you log in. Uh, I think the first thing you probably wanna do, depending on you know how many people in your house you wanna share it with, then uh, you probably wanna start out with security. Um, and you know you just create a new user. I already did one right here, but let's say we create another one here. I just type in hell yeah. And let's say the password is two three four five. How about that? And that's it for the, the user. Okay. So we have two user got let you and hell yeah. Okay. If you want to do that. Um usually I have no user because I'm the only one that using this, so I don't really need to add a user. But this is just for an example. Uh, next thing you want to do is either go to books if you have you know PDFs and stuff and EPUBs. But like I said, I don't use that shit. I use it mainly for comics. So I'm gonna go to my comics, hit edit, and in here to tell you uh, to share your CBR files, CBZ files, and all that and PDFs, right? Uh, real simple. You just type in the folder that you want to share. So my folder is what is that here? is in my uh, media you want to put the absolute path right and this one is my caliber uh, since I use caliber to handle all my comics so I just point it to my uh, caliber directory and I just paste it in here and that's the you know directory I want to share if you want to uh, have certain users only read these thing here then you just type that in here let's say for example I want God let you to read this only right or you want another user you just hit comma type in hell yeah and so on and so forth so let's say you have porn on one directory and you don't want to share with the other user then you don't type in their names 
so on and so forth. If you have like another directory, um, I don't know, like this one here, downloads, then you can type in, you know, that. And let's say I just want to use this with uh, one user only, not two users. All right. You can do something like that. Not that hard. I'll show you an example here also. Um, and after that, you hit apply. Since I don't want to apply anything, I just go back. Pretty much it for uh, setting up your, you know, your library. Now here in the generals, um, not that hard to tell you, you know, the, the intervals you want to scan your books. So you can do every 15 minutes, an hour, a week, so on and so forth. Um, they do have themes. Actually, by default, they only have one theme, and that's the default theme. If you want this other theme, you have to go to your site and download it and then put it in the theme folder. They show you how to do it. Anything else? Um, that's pretty much it, you know. And if you don't want to change these settings and you just want to manually scan uh, when you log in here, you can hit uh, launch new scan and I'll scan for new books, right? It'll scan for new books, it's not going to go rescan everything. So it only scans for the changes. Uh, so that's good about that. Anything else? Not that hard in here. You can figure all these other shit out. Advanced in here. Let's go in here. What do you got? Uh, I like to enable this one. High empty folders. If the folder is empty, I don't want to see it. Um, anything else? In here? Oh yeah, this one. OPDS. Uh, this one's mainly for like mobile phone apps. So let's say you're on your Android or your iOS, whatever. They have like comic viewers that has this protocol, and you can um, you add it. I'll, I'll say like add web um, web library or something like that. And you can actually use this. Although this one is only meant for downloading the comics, which I don't want to do. However, I heard that they're going to extend this uh, protocol to have streaming. And once that happens, I'll probably make another video. But right now, I don't like the downloading. But that's what this one's for, for that uh, mobile phone protocol. All right? So you can use it with those apps. And you can actually read it with inside the apps. Anyways, that's pretty much it for all the settings. After you have this all set up, like I said, you can go to, um, instead of typing admins here, you just delete the admin and just have the port only. And you have your comics, all right? Which I already showed you in the beginning. Anything else? Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to set this up on a cron tab, so let's say you want to automatically start up, you can do cron tab dash E. And where the hell do I have that? Uh, right here, there, this is the two thing that I use, right? And if you want to set it up so it'll automatically run uh, once you boot up your computer, you can do that. So this is what I have on here on reboot, and the cron tab will just, uh, you know, run the program uh, real easy. But since this one is probably on your server, you probably don't need to do that. Uh, you know, just launch it one time and your server will be active forever. Uh, so that's pretty much it for Ubiquity and then uh, I started using it more often because I have a, you know a, a faster phone now and I actually can read it when I'm taking a dump or something like that I can read my comics and I'm good to go. I don't have to download anything uh, So that's it for this program. Like I said, it's not open source. That's the only bad part about it um, But everything else is cool when you use it And you can set up on your own server All right, that's it